we're going to get our first taste of turning fractions and decimals into percents. Uh, we've already turned fractions to decimals and then decimals back to fractions. Um, but now we're going to take both of them and turn them into percents. Uh, so we can really start working with the percents that we are going to be working with. I'm going to take you through three ways to do this. And I don't know, I think this is actually, uh, should be fairly simple here. But I'm going to show you how to go from a fraction to a decimal to a percent, how to go straight from a fraction to a percent, and then how to go straight from a decimal to a percent. All right, our first shot at this is going to be starting with 5 twentieths. And the first way I'm going to show you how to do this is to go from a fraction to a decimal to a percent. So let's start with going to that decimal. Uh, everybody knows that to change this to a decimal, we're just dividing it out. So I just need to set up my division problem uh, with 5 on the inside, 5 divided by 20, 20 on the outside. And I'm going to put point zero zero zero. We may need some more zeros. We just have to see how it goes. Uh, 2 does not go into 5. I'll just put my decimal point straight up here. 20, excuse me. 20 goes into 50 twice. So my 2 goes here. 2 times 20 is 40. We'll subtract and we'll get 10. Now I'll bring down my 0. 20 goes into 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 five times. 5 times 20 is 100. I've got nothing left over. This is a terminating decimal. Now I've got it as a decimal, and this is a really easy rule of thumb. Um, when you have a decimal, the percent is the first two numbers after the decimal point. The first two numbers after the decimal point. So if my decimal is 0.25, then my percent is 25%. It's the first two numbers after the decimal point. Now, coming down here, uh, if we look at just straight up fraction 2%, this will only work in a few different cases. But in order to change a fraction to a percent, we want the bottom number of our fraction to be 100, if possible. It's not always going to be possible. But if the bottom number is 100, then the top number is automatically what the percentage is. So let me give you an example here. How would I get from 20 to 100? I should be able to do that. That's going to be times by 5. I have to multiply the top by the same thing because we're creating an equal fraction. 5 times 5 is, or 5 times 5 is 25. So now I have 25 hundredths. Okay? That's just exactly how it sounds, 25 hundredths. If you have 100 on the bottom, if you can get 100 on the bottom, then the top is your actual percentage, so that is 25%. Two different ways to get this accomplished here. We could change the fraction to a decimal first and then take the first two decimal places, that's your percent. Or, if possible, if I can change the bottom number to 100, anytime the bottom number is 100, the top number is going to be the percent. So 20 times 5 is 100, we can do that. 5 times 5 is 25, uh, 25%. All right, let's go decimal 2%. Again, this is very, very simple. It's just like the last one we did. Remember when we changed the fraction to the decimal, and then we changed that to percent. It's the first two numbers after the decimal place. So if I have uh, 4,375 ten thousandths, uh, the first two numbers after the decimal point are 43. So this is going to be 43%. Now, something to look at, though. If you've got more numbers than just two, you could put those at the end of the percentage, uh, meaning I could call this 43.75%. I could call this just 43.7%. And I could actually look at the first two numbers, and then look at the next one, and round this up to the closest percent. 43% uh, with a 7 after it would actually be closer to 44%. You might see that written in a lot of ways, but if you can remember the first two numbers after your decimal point is the percentage, 
uh, I think the rest of the stuff will just kind of fall into place. Now I'm doing this next particular example um, for a very specific reason here. This may probably be the most confusing part about this, and it's really not confusing at all if you remember that we want the first two decimal places as the percent. Uh, so for instance here, I'm going to start with both of my top ones here, and I wrote them twice because I want to show you both ways we can do this. Uh, two fiftieths. We could divide this out. And I'd put the 50 on the outside, and my 2 would be on the inside. I put 2.000, okay? So 50 doesn't go into 2. I'll bring my decimal point straight up. 50 does not go into 20, so I need to put a 0 right there. And I could have put a 0 right here, which would be fine, uh, because that just indicates zero holes, but I don't really need that one right there. But I definitely need this one in here. If 50 doesn't go into 20 uh, and it's after the decimal point, that zero is important. So now I need 50 into 200. Uh, 50, 100, 150, 200. That's four times. Four times 50 is 200. Subtract, I get zero. Okay. So now look at my decimal. It's 0 0.04. Now, if we need the first two places, I need to know what to call this as a percent. These are our first two places. Now, we're not going to have 0, 4 percent, okay? We just need to think about what would this be as a whole number here. 0, 4 would be the same thing as just straight up 4 percent, okay? Now, over here, 4 tenths. If I go to divide this out, and you'll understand why I did this one. So 4.000, okay? 10 doesn't go into 4, but it goes into 40. So I'll put my decimal point straight up there. It goes into 40 four times. Uh, 4 times 10 is 40. That's it, 0. Okay, my decimal is this. Now, I only have one right down here, so it's not so confusing here. I only have one number. I have 0.4, okay? But I need two numbers for the percent. I need the first two numbers. So let's think about how this works here on a decimal. If I need the first two numbers, my first number is going to be 4, but what's my second number? Remember, on a decimal, you can add as many zeros to the end of it as you want to. It's the same thing. So 0.4, put a zero after the 4, is the same thing as 40%. So I did this because I wanted you to understand the difference between what 40% is, what that looks like, and what 4% actually looks like. Now, if I come down to the bottom and I go for my other example here as far as trying to make this bottom number into 100 because the top number would then be the percentage. Now, again, this does not work for everything. If my bottom number was 8, this is not going to work because 8 doesn't go into 100. If my bottom number is 17, this is not going to work because 17 doesn't go into 100. But 50 definitely goes into 100. So I should be able to make this work, and this better turn out to be 4% or something's wrong. So 50 times 2 is 100, so I need to multiply the top by 2, and that would be 4, 4 one hundredths. If the bottom number is 100, the top number is the percentage, so it's 4%. Traveling over to this one, uh, 10 definitely goes into 100, uh, and that would be times 10. So I will just do times 10 right here. 10 times 10 is 100. I have to times the top by the same thing. 40 times or 4 times 10 is 40. We got our 40%. If 100 is the bottom number, the top number is the percentage, which is 40%. Here's an example of having a fraction and only being able to do this one way. 7 eighths. I can definitely change this to a decimal and do it that way. If I divide it out, my 8's going to be here, my 7 here, 7.00, 7 a couple zeros just in case we need them. 8 does not go into 7, decimal point, 8 goes into 70. That would be 9 times would be 72, so it would have to be 8. 64, take away equals, we get 6, bring down our 0, we get 60. 8 goes into 60. Five, six, forty-eight, seven times. That's fifty-six. Take away equals four. Now, we basically have enough numbers for our percentage, but we might as well divide because we only need the first two numbers after the decimal point. So we know this is going to be eighty-seven percent. 
but we might as well divide it out just to see if we have anything extra here. I'll bring my zero down. Eight goes into 40 five times. And that ends up being a terminating decimal. Five times eight is 40, we get a zero, okay? So this is a terminating decimal. So we can write this a couple different ways here. Probably the simplest way to do it is if I just cover up the five, I just want the first two numbers after the decimal place, that's probably 87%. If you wanna get creative with this, which you probably should, we take the first two, 87, and then put 0.5%, okay, 87.5%. Uh, or we could look at this and say, well, our percentage is 87, but my next number is five. A five, in any case, when we're rounding, would tell us to round up. So 87%, this is probably actually closer to 88%, but either of those will work. Now, here's the other thing I want to show you, down at the bottom. I cannot make this bottom number 100. I can't do it, okay? It's just not going to work out. Eight's not going to go into 100. What we could do is, as an estimate, as estimation, we could see how close we could get, and I bet it would be pretty close to 88%, but not exactly. Um, so if I made the bottom number close to 100, let's see, times 10, times 11 would be 88, times 12, we'll have to do times 12. Times 12 would be 80 plus 16, that would be 96. That's really close to 100, but not quite. Uh, so if I multiply the top by 12 also, 70, 84, okay? Here's the closest we can get to 100, 84 over 96. So that means our percentage is around 84% because this is cl pretty close to 100, but it's not quite 84%. So it's supposed to be 87%. So if you're looking for something exact, your bottom number has to be 100. If you're just looking for an estimate, you can get pretty close to the bottom number being 100 and you should be okay.